Good evening. Thank you, everybody. Um, Brain-computer interface um, based system are, ba are systems that acquire brain signal, analyze them, and uh, translate them into commands that are related to an output device to carry out a desired action. Uh, thus, PCI do not use the brain normal output pathway of peripheral nerves and muscles. Uh, most used signal is electrical signal uh, produced by the brain itself uh, during a, a physical or mental task. It can be recorded uh, by classical uh, electroencephalography um, that offers a non-invasive but uh, with a poor level of information or directly uh, by intracerebral microelectrodes that are the highest uh, level of data acquisition but uh, that has ethical and technical limitations. And uh, in between, you have um, electrocorticography that uh, represents a, a good compromise. Uh, before exploring uh, clinical applications, let's have a look on uh, uh, some uh, neuro and electrophysiological basis for uh, uh, BCI systems that are useful to understand their um, complexity and uh, limitations. Um, first of all, we can see here that um, Cortical activity overlapping during motor execution and motor imagery. Um, imagery based online feedback given by a BCI system is also a way to empower the motor system activity. I mean, it's possible to, to increase uh, its activity as high or even higher as the one needed to execute a real movement. Co-recording uh, of uh, electrocorticography and uh, movement tracking here of the fingers, allowed the development of uh, BCI algorithm able to predict fingertip trajectory. Uh, we can see here um, the, the actual movement in, in blue lines and the robustness of uh, computer prediction of movement in red here in different slides. Furthermore, um, electrocorticography uh, allows to extract kinetic informations from uh, human cortical signals. As illustrated here, the, the decoding of uh, grasping force, here the, the electrocorticography, and here the prediction of the, the force for grasping. It's, it has been demonstrated that it's even possible to decode the motor command uh, of a contralateral and ipsilateral limb on just one hemisphere. Uh, furthermore, with uh, this kind of microelectrodes, as you see here, a very small one, that's very interesting, for example, for um, restoring post-stroke patient command, for example. Um, same informations were decoded from intracortical recording with uh, those kind of electrodes. Uh, first in uh, monkeys and primates and uh, now in uh, humans. We can uh, have uh, information on position, grasping, velocity, and all the parameters of movement. On this short video, we can see um, the brain gate system. It's an intracortical system. Um, we use a 100 contact electrode array to, uh, that penetrates into the, the superficial layer of the motor cortex to register some of the million neurons that control movement of the opposite arm. Each pin of the electrode uh, record action potentials of many neurons. Signal is wired out of the brain, is amplified, digitized, but it's necessary to use this uh, big uh, non-portable plug system until now. The algorithm detects all the neurons that are firing during action, and the firing rate increases or decreases whether a neuron is engaged or not in a specific task. Each pole of a uh, neuron has its own uh, preferred direction that we can map out in the entire array. For example, if I want to move to this uh, target up on the screen, the algorithm will detect the increasing firing rate of the neuron concerned. I, I propose to classify uh, motor applications for neuro-optopedics uh, rehabilitation in uh, three categories. Uh, the first one is control, those for control, for example, wheelchair or domotic uh, applications, uh, prosthetic arm, for example, and probably in the future, as you see previously, 
um, direct spinal cord stimulation under lesion uh, for paratetraplegic patients. The second uh, category of uh, application is uh, BCI feedback. Uh, we can use uh, this to guide brain plasticity after stroke, for example. And finally, I will evoke uh, BCI for uh, monitoring and uh, for, uh, for protecting brain uh, af during surgery, for example. Uh, since the first human uh, tetraplegic patient implanted in uh, 2000 uh, by Kennedy's team, uh, many progress were done. And uh, you can judge by yourself on this uh, video. Um, this high level 10 degrees of freedom mind controlled robotic arm. This is done with an uh, intracortical implant, as you see here. And uh, a period of training is necessary to intuitively control the machine. And this uh, same device uh, can be used to, to type text, as you see here. This is real-time video. And uh, the woman uh, can uh, reach about six words per minute, about uh, half the speed of a teenage uh, texting on a cell phone. Uh, some French team, uh, as Grenoble team, uh, is about to commercialize the first fully implantable uh, electrocorticographic-based BCI device. Uh, Professor Benabit's project is uh, designed to allow a tetraplegic patient or disabled patient to control an exoskeleton, as you see here, uh, by, by soot. Uh, and of course, why not many other tools or uh, environment control applications? Here, are a work of the French team from Bordeaux, generated by the means of a digital uh, neuromorphic uh, CPG, a locomotor like activity in uh, an uh, isolated uh, rat spinal cord. And uh, this is the same video of um, Grégoire Courtin in uh, Lausanne that shows it's possible to, to stimulate the, the spinal cord to induce some uh, stereotypic movement, but without any feedback control. And you see the, the monkey is, uh, is pulled like this human. And uh, it's, it's not uh, today uh, that we can work with this kind of system. Another way to, to restore function with this kind of uh, tools is, um, for example, for br brachial plexus injuries, to provide direct stimulation on paralyzed muscles um, by the cortical neurons directly. This is called functional electrical stimulation. And uh, we can obtain some very high level of uh, control with this kind of uh, techniques in, uh, in monkeys, for example. And uh, here you can see uh, a, a work with um, FES for a, a paralytic arm after a stroke. Of course, um, motor control is nothing without proprioceptive and sensory feedback. Happily, uh, some uh, first work uh, uh, showed that with uh, intracortical microstimulation, as you see here, it's possible to induce something um, that you feel as a sensory feedback. That's very promising. Neurofeedback is uh, the second great application for rehabilitation after a central nervous system lesion. I mean, for example, stroke or injury. Um, because the ability to give an online feedback of what the brain is doing when performing a mental task, it should to be an excellent way to guide plasticity by training the brain, producing some imposed signal features, or by controlling uh, devices um, to assist movement. Those are the two strategies proposed uh, until now. Post-stroke rehabilitation with uh, BCI is a, a promising tool because uh, uh, the meta-analysis we, we saw uh, uh, previously showed that uh, uh, most of the classical intervention um, do not do better than uh, natural recovery after the after a stroke. Here's a, the stratified uh, recovery uh, about the the level of the the deficit, and uh, only a few applications like mental practice or robotics or CIMT uh, can improve uh, um, recovery of arm movement. 
um, if mental practice seems to be part of these uh, exceptions, uh, it's, it's something uh, difficult to, to analyze and it's still a, a complex and subjective task that not every patient can achieve. So um, beside guided motor imagery is one of the solutions that have been imagined and that is being studied yet. Uh, I want to show you uh, an example. Uh, in our uh, university hospital, we implanted uh, cortical stimulation on two patients suffering from uh, intractable pain, um, consecutive to um, post-traumatic and post-stroke uh, injury. Uh, this is a classical normalization procedure used for uh, intractable pain. Uh, electrodes were implanted here epidurally uh, in front of the primary motor cortex and um, in the region corresponding to the painful somatotopy. Electrodes were um, temporally externalized, as you see here, um, for a classical clinical testing. And we also connected uh, the electrodes to a uh, homemade BCI system to evaluate the effects of uh, BCI-guided motor mental imagery on motor deficit. Um, Electrocorticographic here um, and the electromyographic uh, signal were recorded and uh, analyzed in real time uh, while patients were um, asked to alternate rest and uh, motor task in order to identify signal features um, owning to um, each class. The algorithm detects an important uh, change in the 10 Hz frequency band between the, the resting state here in red and uh, the motor activity here. And um, this variation is translated in a vertical movement of a cursor on the screen here. That's the, the visual feedback we give to the patient. Uh, the more you imagine movement of the hand, for example, the more the cursor climbs on the screen. And you can see here when the, the patient imagine he moves his hand, the, the cursor climbing. And we can change the, the parameters to force the patient to, to imagine more and more. Patients were asked to use this feedback uh, to uh, sort of increase the difference between the cortical signal of two states, the, the resting state in blue and the motor activity in red. And you see uh, across many trials that patients achieved the, this goal by sort of uh, uh, some few minutes training. We, we observed after less than uh, 48 hours of uh, BCI training uh, uh, a surprising improvement. You see here the, the movement before the, the training. And you see here after some uh, few minutes of training the movement and we, we can see the, the patterns of, acti of activity of the brain before and after training. Literature uh, review confirmed that uh, there is an increasing interest on that field with more than uh, now 500 patients enrolled in clinical trials. Many papers tend to, to highlight by the way of uh, functional MRI, for example, some changes in uh, functional brain organization and uh, their behavioral correlations uh, after uh, rehabilitative therapy using brain-computer interface. Pain is often linked, um, as we see previously, uh, to neuroorthopedic pathologies. Um, maladaptive plasticity is thought to be one of the mechanisms involved in pain genesis, particularly in uh, phantom limb pain or brachial plexus or uh, paratetraplegia and even uh, CRPS syndromes. An example here of uh, a normal uh, subject um, amputated patient with uh, no pain and amputated patient with pain, you see the, the plasticity of the brain on the motor cortex. We think that BCI could be a, a precious tool to guide and uh, re-engage a sensory motor cortex in a normal activity um, lost because uh, the limb is not more used. And we, we developed for, uh, for that in Nantes um, a system designed as a, cas as a kind of advanced mirror box to treat uh, phantom limb pain the patient is wearing a, a virtual reality display and an EEG bonnet and connected to a BCI system and he is asked to imagine movements of his paralyzed or amputated upper limb. 
and DBCI gives him a, a real-time feedback visual uh, by moving the, the correspondent limb of an avatar, as you can see here in this video. The, the limbs, it's, in the, it's not a patient, it's a normal one. Um, the limbs are, are tracked by uh, the system, and you see when the, the patient is moving his uh, normal hand, the avatar is doing the, the same movement. And now, for example, we imagine this, this is a, a paralyzed limb or a prosthetic limb, and you imagine you move your hand, and the avatar is moving exactly as you imagine. So it's, it's, it's really a, a powerful feedback, and we think it can uh, decrease pain. Uh, now a clinical trial is running to evaluate this. Two last things I, I wanted to include in this topic are linked to neuromonitoring. Um, first one concerns the field of deep brain stimulation for movement disorders as Parkinson's disease, dystonia, or essential tremor. We currently stimulate uh, deep brain nuclei with a, a constant high frequency current independently of the motor status of the patient. And we tend to think that uh, recording neurons and uh, decoding their activity be by the means of this uh, algorithm used in BCI system, uh, we could uh, trigger stimulation only when it's needed. And uh, this probably will improve clinical results. This is uh, called um, a closed loop stimulation. And it's, it's really, uh, pr really promising now. And uh, for, for finishing on a, a more preventive aspect, um, BCI now help us to perform, a, as you see in a, in a non-surgery, um, a complex brain mapping for tumor resection uh, uh, in uh, awake surgery uh, in order to, to preserve function um, because it's, uh, it's very important to, to keep in mind the preventive aspect to avoid poor postoperative neuroorthopedic conditions. We, we can uh, now localize uh, simple functions like visual or sensory or motor functions, but also more complex things like language, cognitive task, and uh, um, calculation and everything. And uh, we see uh, with this kind of electrodes put on the, the cortex for this tumor resection, uh, all the spots that are indicating uh, what the patient is activating during uh, the task. Uh, I thank you uh, all for your attention at this late hour. <laughs> and uh, I hope I succeeded to show you that those technologies are not just science fiction and uh, that it is slowly but surely entering in our professional activities. And um, as um, we said before, uh, we have to remember uh, ethical concerns on, the on those technologies and keep patients at the, the center of our care. Thank you very much. <laughs>